as you can see, I'm not in my normal spot, and that's because I'm actually in the mountains on a little vacation. But I have some huge stories I still have to cover. And don't worry, I'll be back to my normal style videos on Wednesday. Either way, I've got some big stuff, starting with board partners confirming Super 2.0, RTX 4090s are breaking all over, Ryzen 8000G is official, and Nvidia's RTX 5000 looks to be a monster update. Welcome everyone to GamerMeld. Okay, it's news time man, first up for today, as you can see right here, it says Nvidia's RTX 40 Super Specs get confirmed by board partners. This story originally comes from video cards, and you can see it says earlier this week, Nvidia started sharing more detailed information regarding the upcoming RTX 40 Super refresh to its partners. These companies have now received info featuring the core GPU specifications and requirements for the models now designated as Super Variants. Starting things off, we can see the RTX 4080 Super is assigned a board number of PG139 and a SKU number of 355. Basically, this really shows that it is absolutely coming. NVIDIA looks to have finally made the ultimate decision that they are 100% releasing these. It says this card is confirmed to house the 8103-400 GPU. This actually represents the complete implementation of this graphics processor with 10,240 CUDA cores. Now, of course, we more or less already knew this. We knew the core count and all of that good stuff, but this really just solidifies it. And they're claiming that the information ultimately comes from board partners. Not only that, but it is confirmed to come with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, across a 256-bit bus. And not only that, but partners were informed that the TGP is set to 320 watts. Next, we have the RTX 4070 Ti Super. Once again, this really more or less confirms that NVIDIA really is throwing all the naming scheme stuff that they've done in the past right out the window by combining both their Ti and Super monikers. Either way, this card, it's a PGA 144 SKU 323. The GPU itself is the 8103-275, and it comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory and has a TGP of 285 watts. Finally is the 4070 Super. This one utilizes the PG141 board and is SKU 335. It uses, this is the actual GPU itself, it uses the 8104-350 GPU and it will apparently launch with a TGP of 225 watts. Not only that, but as you can see, it says due to the increase in power, the model will now use the 12 VPHWR connector, so this is that 16-pin connector. Finally, these models apparently are slated for an on-shelf availability in January, so they are in fact coming in just a couple months. And next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that we recently heard that Andy's next-gen APUs for desktop, they were going to be skipping the 7000G series and moving straight to 8000G. Well, it's looking to be confirmed that they are in fact coming and soon. But first, as PC enthusiasts, we all love having the best. But unlike PC hardware, you don't have to spend a ton of money to use the best learning platform out there with today's sponsor. Brilliant! And when I say you don't have to spend a lot, I mean you can try it out for free when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. As for what makes them the best, I like to talk about the fact that they were made specifically to teach the STEM field, but that's not even the biggest reason. What I love is that you learn by doing, so no more memorizing a bunch of formulas or anything like that. Instead, you get in there and do it yourself with their interactive and engaging puzzles. Whether it's learning about LLMs or large language models that power your favorite chatbots to learning how to code, they've got it all. And like I said, they're currently offering my viewers a 30-day free trial when you you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you can get 20% off their premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Now back to the story, a little while ago, AMD released an Agisa update that basically added support for something that effectively proved that AMD was going to be releasing something for desktop for their 600 series motherboards, the AM5 socket. 
Since then, we've had a ton of rumors come out about their APUs, and we pretty well knew that that was likely what it was, but now we really have confirmation. As you can see in an official post by Gigabyte, it says, Gigabyte Technology, a leading manufacturer of motherboards, graphics cards, and hardware solutions, released the latest Agisa Beta BIOS for AM5 next-gen APU support on X670, B650, and A620 motherboards. And of course, the most important part, at least this first part, is next-gen APU support. And because we're talking X670, B650, A620, AM5, that means next-gen APUs for desktop. Effectively, all the leaks that we've been seeing are looking to be more and more accurate because this 100% confirms that AMD is releasing their next-gen APUs for desktop very soon, but actually it's really, really soon because you can see right here it says the forthcoming AM5 next-gen APU will be launched at the end of January 2024. Given we haven't really heard pretty much anything from AMD about this, I'm not really sure whether Gigabyte was supposed to release this post yet or not, but it's here. And it 100% confirms that we are seriously talking next-gen APUs. Remember that this is going to be going from Vega integrated graphics card all the way up to, from what we've been seeing, RDNA 3. So that's a huge jump, but not only that, it looks like we're going from 8 GPU cores to 12. So a giant leap in architecture, as well as a pretty decent jump in GPU cores as well. Of course, we'll have to wait and see just to make 100% sure that all these leaks are accurate, but so far, let's just say I'm excited. With that said, one thing I'm not excited to discuss is this new report from Tom's Hardware. As you can see right here, it says that a hundred RTX 4090s with melted power connectors are being repaired every month. Moving on down here, it says the saga continues over a year after the first problems with the RTX 4090's melted 12 VHPWR connector, the 16-pin power connector for NVIDIA's newest 4000 series GPUs. Well, it's actually just a power connector for the PCI Express 5.0 in general, but as of right now, they're really the only ones that utilize it. Regardless, you can see it says a Northbridge fix repairman claims that he must fix about 100 4090 GPUs with failed connectors every month. The actual quote is down here. It says, quote, we get about 20 to 25 4090s a week. That, of course, is much worse than what NVIDIA was quoting. They had said at the time, this was quite a bit after, that I believe they had gotten something like 50 total, and that was it. it, it let's just put it this way. It definitely wasn't a lot, but this person is talking just his repair shop alone is seeing 20 to 25 a week. In fact, the volume is so high, he has said, quote, we get them in so much that I bought myself this Hiroshima mask so I do not have to smell the burn on those conductors. Says, quote, it smells like fireworks times 10. It cannot be healthy to keep smelling burnt connectors. And we can actually see it down here. It says, back in November 2022, NVIDIA said that it was aware of 50 cases of melted 4090 power connector. So it was 50, that's what I thought it was, but clearly it's looking like it's way, way more. Not only that, but the repairman actually says, quote, so now it is safe to say that the 4090 melted connector is not a user problem. We discussed this many times in the past, but I want to mention one last time that this is not a user error. Now, obviously this is just coming from one repairman, but if it really is true that he's getting this many 4090s in, to repair, then clearly this is a much more widespread issue than we ever thought. And it looks like it very much may not just be the whole, oh, just pushing in as far as you can. I mean, maybe it is that. Of course, we have actually seen a new connector that's been being used that effectively fixes that. It pulls some of the pins back where if it's not fully inserted, it won't work anyway. And really, I'd argue that this is more or less an admission of guilt from NVIDIA to say, clearly we didn't do something right, so we're having to release a new connector. But it doesn't really seem like they're getting too much flack for it, but at least from this, there clearly is an issue, once again, if this really is true.
And lastly for today, NVIDIA just announced their newest AI chip. It's actually the H200, but don't worry, this isn't really the main thing that I'm gonna be discussing. I'm just gonna quickly go over this. You can see it says, NVIDIA is introducing a new top of the line chip for AI, the HGX H200. And what it does, it says it right here, the new GPU upgrades the H100 with 1.4 times more memory bandwidth and 1.8 times more memory capacity. Basically, they add the new HBM3E memory. And it certainly is impressive, but not as impressive as this graph that they shared that I really think could be very much indicative of the next gen RTX 5000 GPUs. As you can see, they talk about this new H200. They show that it is quite a bit faster in GPT-3 in the inference performance when compared to the H100, but then they share the next generation B100B being for Blackwell. And of course, remember that Blackwell is said to also be the architecture for their gaming GPUs. And if that ends up being true, that means that Nvidia is moving back to using the same architecture for both their accelerators and their gaming cards. And as you can see right here, it's pretty impressive because we're looking at a potentially double, if not more, the performance when compared to the H200. Now, you're probably wondering how in the world this could translate to the RTX 5000, but besides the fact that they're running effectively the same architecture, I mean, they are going to be really different. Of course, there's different things that they have to do for the accelerators having certain compute performance that there's just no need for in gaming. But the simple fact is that one of the big things going from the A100 to the H100 is that the H100 added FP8 while the A100 didn't have that. So that's one of the big reasons. I mean, it did add quite a bit more cores and things like that, but I highly doubt that they're going to add like FP4 or anything like that to the B100. So I don't really see any way that they can gain a ton of performance without just adding a ton more cores. Of course, adding faster memory can help some. I mean, it helped from the H100 to the H200, and we can actually see that they are gonna be having faster, uh, likely just faster HBM3E memory, but you can see that they also show here that the B100 looks like it's gonna be going up even more. So there is gonna be at least a little bit from that, but there's probably, hopefully, gonna be quite a bit more cores. Now, they could just be adding a ton more FP8, but if they're able to add this many cores to get this much of a jump in performance, I'd like to think that they should be able to do that with the RTX 5000 series. Of course, this is more or less just a guess, but once again, don't forget that Blackwell is going to be in both their accelerator as well as gaming GPUs. So I will say any kind of huge jump even in inference, something that doesn't necessarily translate to gaming, is still a really good sign for their gaming GPUs. So while that does it for today, I do hope you liked the video, and like I said, I should be back to my normal style video on Wednesday, but if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, and let me know what you think about NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series. Is this a really good sign? Is it just pointless? Just let me know what you think. Are you excited for them, or are they just going to be wildly too expensive anyway so who cares let me know that down in the comments below and as always have a great day